What up? This is Josh Rubin from East West Handling Appointments, and today I want to talk about menopause, hot flashes, and aging. I got a lot of notes here that I'm going to refer to, so bear with me. I think it's important to understand this because from what we see, or what I see, or what Jeannie sees, is there's a lot of women out there suffering with menopausal symptoms, like hot flashes. And we're taught, or women are taught, that they need estrogen therapy in order to eliminate their huff lashes. And there's some women that actually get the benefit from this, and we'll talk about maybe why, a uh, more theoretical explanation of why this happens. But according to Ray Pete, menopause is really not a, a sign, it's a sign of a hormone imbalance, of course, but it's actually a sign of aging. And I'll quote him directly. Menopause itself is a result of prolonged exposure to estrogen. Now, I've talked about this. It could be a progesterone deficiency. It could be the inability to detox estrogen. It could be excess estrogen. What we find with most women, it's the inability to detox it and the recirculation of it, which actually not only affects the liver and thyroid conversion because the amount of glucose stored or glycogen stored in the liver is directly in relation to how much energy we produce because the T3 hormone and estrogen waste glucose, but it actually can overload the liver and cause detoxification issues. Um, as a result of prolonged exposure to estrogen, very large doses of estrogen can, and many women stop flushing, and we'll talk about that. So what exactly is a hot flash? A hot flash has nothing to do with your environment, indoor, outdoor, it doesn't matter. The temperature, it has nothing to do with that. It is a symptom or a sign of vasodilation of the blood vessels. Now, what happens with this? Now, this is where doctors say HRT therapy with estrogen is actually beneficial because it causes vasodilation. But the exact mechanism of hot flash is exactly vasodilation, and that's why you get that hot flushing sensation. And it has a lot to do with two things, or three things, estrogen, nitric oxide, and cortisol. Increased vasodilation from estrogen causes increased heat loss through the skin, and a decrease in heat production. Now, estrogen actually causes an increase in heat loss, but a decrease of heat production in the body. And this is why most women, of course, through as well, inhibiting T4 to T3 conversion in the liver, um, as well as taking up receptor sites on your cells so we can't produce thyroid hormone production, this is why most women end up with cold hands or feet in a body temperature that's low, 95, 96 degrees when they wake up in the morning. So it causes heat loss through the skin and a decrease in heat production internally at the cell level, like I talked about. Any decline in heat production we can see through our body temperature causes a decrease in energy production and body temperature. And that's why it's important to look at this. It doesn't matter if you take HRT and your hot flashes eliminate. We have to look at it. I've done a video on this. Are you healthy? You have to look at your overall energy production. The best way to do that, based off the work of Broda Barnes, is looking at body temperature and pulse. And you'll find that most of these women taking this therapy might eliminate their huff flashes, but they actually are doing it at the expense of damaging their metabolism even more, and they end up with a lower body temperature and pulse. Cold hands and feet and things like that. Now, according to Hubbing and Watanabe, nitric oxide, or NO, is produced during a hot flash, from estrogen, which increases vasodilation. So it's actually estrogen increasing nitric oxide, which causes the vasodilation, which causes the heat loss, and which causes decreased heat production, which causing the hot flash. So heat is lost through the skin, and your internal temperature drops, and you get that hot flash. Now, in relation to the production of steroidal hormones, estrogen, serotonin, anytime we have a blood sugar handling issue, anytime estrogen goes up, serotonin is actually stimulated. Things like tryptophan from the foods that we're eating, like, uh, you know, from the conversion of tryptophan in eating a high amount of muscle meats, and melatonin from that conversion are hypothermic in nature. So all these things are hypothermic. All these things cause heat loss and decrease heat production. Now, it's not only from the foods that we take in. Like I mentioned, anytime there's a blood sugar handling issue, things like serotonin actually go up because estrogen goes up and it stimulates that. At the same time, estrogen increases free fatty acids in the blood, decreases glucose oxidation, increases fat oxidation, which increase, decreases optimal energy production, like I talked about, you know, a couple seconds ago. And all these things are hypothermic. So it's not only from the foods that we eat, but it's from what's going on in the body. And if we're increasing free fatty acids, we're breaking down tissue, and this is where we store tryptophan, which is converted to serotonin. When we break this down through gluconeogenesis, because we're not storing enough glycogen, 
Estrogen wastes glucose, we release cortisol to increase our cellular needs or get glucose to the cell, but it's a catabolic way of doing this. Now, Desjardins showed that estrogen interacts with iron as well as PUFAs or unsaturated fats to create free radicals in the body that damage the brain cells, thus causing the pituitary to actually remain active and put us in a constant state of estrus or estrogen-like. So that's another way that we can actually become estrogen dominant, can overload the liver, um, it can inhibit cell energy production, it can inhibit thyroid hormone production, can increase heat loss, uh, and decrease heat production. As well, according to Ray Pete and the work of Ray Pete, PUFAs induce aromatase enzyme, which synthesizes with estrogen. This causes increased estrogen in the body because of decreased excretion through the liver. So we can see that through many of our YouTubes and talking about this, that unsaturated fats have estrogen-like activities in the body. At this point, when we have this induced aromatase enzyme and the increased synthesis of estrogen in the body, estrogen actually bounds to the receptor sites in the cell, so it becomes, I should say, um, it high quantities, I don't know if that's a good word, but it actually becomes bound within the cell and attaches to receptor sites. Um, modifying the cells of your tissues, modifying energy production, and stimulating cortisol, which once again can actually stimulate a hot flash. It's been shown that progesterone as well as aspirin are aromatase inhibitors, and I did a video on aspirin. Now, estrogen is actually used for hot flashes, and a lot of women that, you know, take estrogen uh, sometimes it eliminate the, it eliminates their hot flashes. Now I've talked to Ray P about the Ray Pete about this, and he doesn't have any research. But I've talked to him actually on the phone about this, and our thoughts are kind of similar. Most women that have hot flashes are going into it in a severe hypometabolic state. Their homeostasis here.